Hi, this is Dr. Patrick Oben. Welcome to Glory and Grace Live Bible Study. Praise the Lord for another wonderful, wonderful day He is giving to us. I have a glorious word to share with you today. And that's going to be from first the first episode of Paul to the Corinthians. And it's entitled, The Natural Man, The Spiritual Man, and The Carnal Man. What a topic. The natural man, the spiritual man, and the carnal man. I don't know if you've ever heard of those words, but they are actually from the scriptures. So we're going to be talking about those three and see where you belong and how do they really apply to us personally as um, you know, children of God. So are you ready? Let's get started. First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter 2. I'll be reading from verse 14, talking about the natural man, the spiritual man, and the carnal man. Verse 14, it says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he might instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Chapter 3 from verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, he comes back to it, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. So the natural man, the spiritual man, and the carnal man, what do they mean? And um, even more importantly, how do they apply to us as Christians today? So first, I'm talking about men. However, this is not limited to men. It has to do with you know, you could change it from man to persons. It has to do with people, whether man or woman. So it's not restricted to men. That's an important clarification to make from this very start. So what is the Lord saying here? What do these words mean? We're going to begin with the natural man and then look at what is a spiritual man and then the carnal man. First, the natural man. The word itself, natural. In the Greek, of course, if you, those of you are familiar with Greek, this, it comes from psuchikos. That has to do with the soul. The soul is like, you could define it as the soulish man. The soulish man. First, let me say this. The natural man is different from the carnal man. They are not the same. That's why we're talking about the three types of men or persons living on the earth. So first, who is the natural man? The word natural really conveys it. The natural man. Let me go back to Genesis chapter 1. You know, look at how God created man. Look at Genesis chapter 2 and Genesis chapter 3. Just a brief summary, probably a one-liner. When God made man, man was intimately connected to God. Man is body, soul, and spirit. Let me give you an example of what happened to Adam. Do you know that Adam named all the animals that God created? He named them. Amazing. Mental capacity. Amazing. Let me show you something quite interesting. God put Adam to sleep, and he came and took a rib from Adam. Adam was asleep. Adam didn't know. Adam got up. God had not spoken to him. God brought the woman and showed, it to, showed her to Adam. Adam says, bone of my bones. Adam knew that the woman was taken from his bones. How did he know? Amazing. Mental capacity. So, without getting into 
the further details about that. The reason I give those two examples to you is to show you the level at which humanity was operating. That was not mental. Adam wasn't smart. He wasn't a mental ability that Adam had to, to be able to name all the animals. He, he, when he saw an animal and gave a name, it wasn't just a name. He called them what they should be. He named all of them. No stress. He saw a woman and knew God took him from his ribs. How did he know? Who told him? That that was the man God made. When man fell, something tragic happened. The ability that was operating in man, that gave him the, 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 the capacity to know beyond the natural was coming from his spirit. He wasn't natural. That's why I told you it wasn't a matter of being smart, intelligent, mentally elevated. It wasn't an issue of the mind. Man's spirit was fully in, you know, fully involved in the daily affairs of man. Man was operating by the spirit. Now, not by the Holy Spirit. By his spirit. In other words, man's spirit was in charge, exercising spiritual abilities through his mind. He could operate at capacities which are beyond what we can ever imagine today. That was the man God made. When sin came, something th really bad, terrible happened to us humans. The spirit was severed in terms of control and full exercise from the body and the mind. In other words, the spirit died. Not that it became non-existent. The human spirit was still there, but it wasn't exerting its influence as before. Not only was man cut off from God, but man's spirit lost the control over his body and his mind. And when the spirit of man lost that control, the mind, the mind now, the natural part of man came as the controller, as the ultimate boss of the human being. The spirit used to control and impart to the mind spiritual abilities. The mind was operating not from a natural perspective, but from a spiritual perspective. When man fell, the spirit's control and influence diminished. The mind was elevated to be the boss. And the mind started functioning under, you know, mental capacities, mental influences. Today, you know, we can develop our minds, but there is no way the mind can develop to the extent that it is controlled by the spirit. So what is the natural man? The natural man is that man. It's that man that is fallen. Number one, that doesn't have the influence from the spirit realm. Remember, Adam was operating under the influence of his spirit, not the, God, not the Holy Ghost, of his spirit, which was not corrupt. He was free of sin, completely free of sin. But however, something happened to man. When man's spirit died, in other words, God severed from God, and his influence over the body and the mind dropped. The mind was elevated, and man started functioning under natural abilities. That is the natural man. It is the natural man. It is the man that is operating fully based on human mental capacities. You can, you can, you can imagine the numbers today. You know, we, 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 science has elevated our minds. We have philosophers. You know, they are great thinkers and lots of things going on with the human mind. But it can never come close to the human spirit that was in control. That wasn't, that wasn't enough. The greatest thing that even happened when it comes to knowledge is that the spirit of man was blinded. Oh, this is very, very important. God, number one, 
Remember I told you, number one, the spirit of man died, meaning he got severed, separated from God. Number two, its influence over the body and soul diminished. And the worst part of it all, besides the separation from God, is that man's spirit was darkened. When you read the scripture, the Bible talks about their foolish minds were darkened, like he says in Romans chapter 1. He wasn't just talking about men, the ability to reason, no. It's talking about the human spirit being blinded to spiritual realities. What does that mean? It means the natural man can no longer know the spirit realm. Man's greatest ignorance is not the ignorance of space. It's not the ignorance of scientific realities. Man's greatest ignorance, which is most costly, is the ignorance of his spirit. Go to all the universities today. You, we have great philosophers. We, I'm, I'm a doctor. We've learned about the body. We've learned about how disease functions. We've learned about the mind. It's still a little blurry, but a lot of information has developed from the mind. We have learned how the mind functions. You don't hear about the spirit, do you? No. Why? Why don't you hear? Why don't you go to Harvard or some big university and you get a class on spirit, the human spirit? Do they even know that there is a spirit in man? Do they, would they accept it? It's blurry. It's blurry. There is a spirit inside of man. We can't ignore it. The issue is that there is no knowledge in the natural man. There is a blindness, meaning that the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit anymore. In other words, he cannot understand God. It is no surprise. The man, the sinner, thinks there is no God. It's no surprise that the sinner thinks that God is not existent. When they hear of the gospel, they say these are, these are foolish fanatics. Why do they do that? It's not because they are not smart. Let me say this. If you, if you have ever wondered why the world doesn't believe in Christ and you think it is a matter of they have not really understood the philosophy of Christianity or, you know, they, we really have to prove the philosophy of Christianity to them for them to really understand. If you think it's a matter of the mind, then <laughs> there is a lot that you have to learn about the consequences of the fall. People are not rejecting Christ because they don't understand him. They, they don't know him. They cannot know him by the mind. That's very important. Who is the natural man? He's the man that functions by his mind. He functions based on natural impulses that come to him. And that natural man cannot know the spirit. You, they, some of them, don't, they don't believe that there is a devil. They don't believe that there are angels. Those, some of them, the stories seem to be tales to them. Great philosophers, great thinkers, some of them, those that believe in God, of course, they have a godly mindset. Others, they think the affair of the spirit is just foolishness. Do you know why? Because the natural man, the spirit of the natural man has been blinded. Now, for time's sake, that's just the basics that I'm laying. So every sinner by default is a natural man. It's not, it, it's not saying that they are sinners. No, the natural man is, the, 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 the heart of it is not sin. It's not saying that they are sinners. No, they are natural, meaning the influence of the spirit. First, their human spirit. And secondly, their Holy Ghost, the spirit of God, is separated from them. They can't know the things of the spirit. They can't see into the spirit realm. God is in the spirit realm. It is impossible for them to know God. I want you to take note of that statement. It's very important. It is impossible for the natural man to know God. Let me read the scripture to you from what we just read. Verse 14. It says, The natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Do you see that? Can you imagine? There is a God, and somebody sits, great thinker, great in the mind, accumulated so much scientific wisdom, and says there is no God. God looks down at him and says, you are really a fool indeed. That's what the scripture says. 
that the fool has said in his heart there is no God. Why does God call him? Why does God call that foolishness? Because they sit down. The idea of God is absolute foolishness to them. It is not because they are, their minds are not sharp. It's because their spirit is dark. They can't know the spirit. It's impossible. There is no way a natural man can study, study really hard and discover God. It's impossible. It is not a matter of mental ability. Listen to what this verse says. It says, neither can they know them, spiritual things, because they are spiritually discerned. Do you know what that means? In other words, it is a spiritual ability that makes you know God. Very, very important. And now, just um, look, keeping an eye on my time. If you understand those very basics about the natural man, there's just so much to talk about that. But let me get to the spiritual man. Who is the spiritual man? The spiritual man is not a, a man who is superstitious or a man who is involved in spiritual things. That's really not a spiritual man. That's not what he's saying. It stems out from the natural man, an understanding of the natural man. It now begins to give you an idea of who the spiritual man is. When you got born again, listen to me, your human spirit got born again. In other words, the spirit that was dead came back alive, number one. But God did it and there. Something happened to us. And that is the heart of the matter. Something happened when we received Christ. Not only if God had ended where our human spirit got born again and we came back alive, would have been like Adam, same would have functioned like Adam, would have operated in the capacity of Adam. That would have been wonderful. But do you know what? God didn't end there. Oh, precious Lord. Something happened. Do you know what God did? God brought alive the human spirit, but gave the human spirit, the believer, his own spirit. God gave the believer in Christ. Whoever believes in Christ, God gives them his own spirit, his personal spirit. Remember, Adam had a spirit. You have a spirit. That is not the Holy Ghost. God has a spirit. So God gives his spirit to you. His spirit now comes and meddles. Just imagine, I have a bottle of water and I have a bottle of soda. And I mix both of them. They become one. Right? You can't separate them anymore. That's how the Holy Ghost has meddled with the born-again spirit. Now God's spirit, what is the spirit? The spirit is an animating. Yes, it is God. But besides that, it is an animating force that brings a life, the life of God, if I would put it that way. So you know what that means? God has given you his spirit to bring a life inside of you, his nature and his life. That's the meaning of the fact that God has given you his spirit. So what happens is as soon as the spirit of God came into us, number one, right, we were born again, but number one, our spiritual eyes that were darkened by sin opened up. Oh, glory to God. If you have, under, if you have ever thought about, you know, as in John, the Bible says he opened their understanding. What understanding? It's not the mind. It is the spirit. It is the spirit that knows God. The mind cannot know God. So when the spirit, when the Holy Ghost came into us, something happened. The spiritual eyes inside of us, in other words, the eye that sees God, the eye that is able to know God. Remember, spiritually, when the Lord talks about seeing and knowing, they are really the same thing from two different perspectives. When the Lord talks about you seeing Him, He's talking about you knowing him. So the spiritual eyes opened up. So the Christian is a spiritual man, not because he is involved in spiritual things. No, it's because he has the Spirit of God. Oh, glory to God. The natural man is devoid of spiritual influences is devoid of the positive spiritual influences, doesn't have the Spirit of God. The spiritual man, remember, is not a spiritual person that is involved in spiritual things. 
Oh, he's praying, he's fasting, he goes to church, or he has some religion, he's a spiritual man. No, the spiritual man is defined by one thing that results in the others. And the one thing is that, number one, he has the Spirit of God. And because he has the Spirit of God, the first thing that happens is that that spiritual man can know God. you see it in the verses we've read. It says they are spiritually discerned. God is known by the Spirit. God is not known by the mind. God is known by the Spirit. So the fact that God has given you His Spirit, it means you have the ability to know God. It is not reasoning. It is a spiritual influence. That opens your understanding to know God. That is the spiritual man. Knowing God is just one of the influences, obviously. There are so many other things. The second thing, of course, that happens is because you have the Spirit of God, the wisdom of God is imparted in you. Because you have the Spirit of God, the power of God has been imparted in you. There are so many consequences that follow receiving the Spirit of God. The basic one of it all is that the Spirit of God carries the nature. He is God. He is God. So by the fact that God gave you His Spirit, that is an impartation of the divine nature inside of you. So who is the spiritual man? It's the Christian. Who is the spiritual man? It's the believer. It is the man that can know God. He is the man that has the Spirit of God. He is the man that God can speak to and he hears. Do you know that the unbeliever cannot hear God? Do you know why? Dead spirit. Do you know that God cannot reach out? You might say, but well, he's God. He can do anything. No, that's not the way it functions. The spirit of God is a realm of functioning of God. Anyone who is out of that realm is out of his reach. If I would put it that way. Glory to God. You are the spiritual man. It's not because you are, it's, it's not because you are just a Christian and living right. No, it's because you have the Spirit of God. And secondly, because you have the Spirit of God, God expects you, the spiritual man now, listen, this is a second characteristic besides having the Spirit of God. Remember I said so many things follow. One of the things that follow, I just mentioned to you, is that you have the ability to know God, but that's not all. The other part of this is that you have the ability to walk, to live, by the Spirit of God. In other words, He gives you promptings. He guides you on how to do things. He tells you what to do. He, I will not talk about this today for time's sake, but it's not like He gives you, He tells you a voice every time in your ear. That's not what the leadership of the Spirit means. Yeah, God can speak to you in your ear. The Bible says God spoke to, you know, to the prophet. Sometimes He speaks speak to them in their ears. They heard Him like a man. But that's not, that's not all. The leadership of the Spirit means that you, you, you are guided by the Spirit. It might not be a, an audible voice. It might be an influence in your spirit. It might be an impression. No matter what it is, is that your steps are ordered by the Spirit. The spiritual man. Those that are children of God, they are the ones that are, they have the Spirit of God and they walk. They are led by the Spirit of God. So who is the, the spiritual man? He has the Spirit of God. Of course, he knows God. I'll not talk about that again. But the second part that is pertinent to us today is that he is led by the Spirit. He wants to do something. The Spirit guides him. He guides his mind. He guides his words. He guides his actions. Do you see the difference? The natural mind is guided by his natural... The natural man is guided by his natural mind. He does things based on how he feels, how he thinks, and what makes sense to him. No. We are beyond that. The Spirit of God guides you. He, he influences your mind, brings your mind under the influence of the Spirit and guides the way you think, the way you act. You are no more just, you don't just do things because you feel like doing them. You are not led by lust. You are led by the Spirit. That's a spiritual man. Glory to God. And let me end very quickly. Who is the carnal man? Remember? I talked to you about this natural man. I spoke to you about the spiritual man. So who is the carnal man? Now, this is a different, this is a different thing altogether. Listen to verse chapter 3, verse 1. It says, I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual. Spiritual means that what? These are people who have the spirit, but that's not all. 
but they live by the Spirit. And whenever we live by the Spirit, there is no way we are going to fight with each other. Because that was a problem with the Corinthian church. So much disagreement. They were prophesying by quarreling with each other. That's the reason why you can't use the gifts of the Spirit only to determine spiritual maturity. In fact, spiritual maturity is not judged by the gifts of the Spirit. It's judged by the fruit of the Spirit. Well, I'm not, I'm not, not talking about that now. But so... He now says, I couldn't speak to you as unto spiritual. In other words, unto people like, un like unto people who have the spirit and live by the spirit. But I spoke to you as unto carnal. Carnal man. Oh, so who is the carnal man? He's not the natural man. No, the carnal man is the spiritual man, number one, because he's a Christian, meaning that he has the spirit of God. Number two. He has the Spirit of God, but he is living like the natural man. <laughs> oh, glory to God. I want you to see the hybrid. The natural man, he does not have the Spirit of God. He is led by his mind, his feelings. This is what I want to do. He is led by his, his, his volition, purely. I want to do this, nobody stops me. My will, my way, my this. He doesn't have the Spirit. He is led by his mind. That's okay for the natural man. Now the spiritual man who has the spirit of God but is led with his, by his mind like the natural man, that is the carnal man. He lives by his senses. He lives by his feelings. He lives by what he thinks and what he imagines. Glory to God. That's why the, the carnal man is a man that's going to live in sin. He's the man that's going to live in strife. Oh, I'm going to this church. I go to this church. This is my man of God. You, your church is not right. Pentecostals are the right people. You know, the Baptists are, you know, they are the only ones who understand the gospel. This is what the Corinthian church was going through. Oh, my, my man of God is Apollos. My man of God is Paul. My man of God is Jesus. Jesus, you know what Paul says? You are carnal. You know, that was all of that is a product of carnality. Division is a, is a pure manifestation of carnality. And Paul was saying that that is carnality to its highest degree. So who is the carnal man? The carnal man is the man that has the spirit of God, but lives as the natural man. I pray that that will not be your portion today. That that indeed will not be your portion. Praise the name of the living God. So you now understand who is the natural man? Who is the spiritual man? And who is the carnal man? As a Christian, you are in the Spirit. You have the Spirit of God. What does the Lord expect from you? So He expects you to live by the Spirit. That is your blessing. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to see you next week, same time, 7.30, sharing the word of the Lord with you. Until then, remain blessed. Remember, always check out our website, patrickoben.com find devotionals and more um, audio or video teachings like what you have just received. God bless you. Bye-bye.